Hey guys, well I had a chance to get out and actually do some imaging and this time I had a rare combination of clear skies, no moon, and no wind, but high humidity so I used the dew shield. And so I wanted to uh, take an opportunity here to visit a couple of issues that have been hanging out there. I'm going back to take a look at how we calibrate flats, or more importantly how I've been calibrating flats and trying to improve my process. But at the same time I want to check to see if taking flats with or without the dew shield when you take light frames with or without the dew shield is an important consideration. So we'll fold that into our discussion today. I've shown this picture before. I use the t-shirt method uh, to take flats. Typically I will uh, take flats either in the evening just before I start imaging or the next morning before I bring the scope back in for the day. It is uh, a cheap method. It doesn't require a light panel. It is uh, convenient, relatively speaking. You just obviously wheel the scope over, have it point vertical, but not at uh, or even close to the direction of the sun, and take your flats. Now, I tend to do this in the early morning. You could do it in the midday. Uh, one of the challenges of doing it in the early morning is that the light levels are changing fairly rapidly as the sun is coming up. And that's one of the main disadvantages of this approach. There's no control over your exposure time. It's difficult to repeat. Even if you're doing the same technique and the same um, from day to day or time to time, you still get some variation in exposure times. And the exposure times tend to be very short. Some of you have commented that uh, the ASI 1600, which is the camera I've been using, uh, is uh, not stable for uh, shorter uh, exposure times. I have not found that to be the case, uh, which is not to say that I disagree. It's just I haven't seen that effect, and it's entirely possible that I have so many other effects going on that I can't see that relatively small effect. Another thing, some of you use light panels. That's a good thing to do because you can uh, totally you have total control over the amount of illumination and therefore you can dial back the illumination to get a uniform exposure time from from sitting to sitting. This is the method I've been using to take the flats and now let's go over to this particular uh, comparison that I want to do today. I was out taking lights. The exposure time was 200 seconds. I have the camera cooled to a minus 10 degrees C. The gain is set to 50 and the offset is 20. And this time I was actually able to take the lights with a dew shield. Uh, now, when I take the flash, I did it two different ways. One, I did it with a dew shield attached and I have an exposure time of 55 milliseconds, obviously quite a bit shorter than the 200 seconds exposure time at night. So I have a 55 millisecond exposure time for the flats, but I'm using the same temperature gain and offset that I did for the flats, and I took the set of flats with the dew shield in place. I then repeated that by taking, by removing the dew shield and taking flats, and this time I got a a, an exposure time again aiming for a, a an ADU level of 20k so all the flats are being taken with a nominal target ADU level of 20k uh, in this case the flat exposure time without the dew shield was about 27 milliseconds now all of that time is not just because I took off the dew shield which let additional stray light into the into the uh, aperture which is possible obviously but it's also because when I did these flats I started with the luminance filter with the dew shield on went through uh, red green blue and hydrogen alpha again with the dew shield in place and then came back to the luminance filter after removing the dew shield and so by that time the sun had come up a little more so it's a little bit brighter outside in combination with the fact that you're taking off the dew shield which is allowing more light uh, presumably uh, into the uh, into the aperture. Now the bias frames are taken at the fastest exposure time that the camera is capable of which is about 32 microseconds. Again same temperature gain and offset. The dark frame that I'm using, and we'll talk a little bit about the procedure here in a bit, the dark frame that I'm using it has an exposure time of 50 seconds and again it's only used in this context this particular dark frame is only used in this context when calibrating the flat frames again we'll talk about that in a second but once again all the, the temperature gain and offset are the same for all these guys right and then i brought the scope in i don't usually do in fact i've never done dark flats before but some of you have mentioned uh, that that's the way to go and, and I, I do agree that that is the proper thing to do rather than 
uh, subtract the master bias and a scaled or optimized master dark from the flat, which is what I have been doing. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the master dark flat, which is a dark frame taken at the same exposure time as the flat frame, so 55 milliseconds or 27 milliseconds, depending on which one we're talking about, with or without the dew shield. Uh, that dark flat contains the bias, but it also contains a properly optimized or scaled version of the dark because the dark is taken at the same uh, exposure time as the, the flat frame. Uh, so I, I brought the scope in. Normally I take darks upstairs in the room with no windows. I put the cover on. I do everything I can to prevent stray light from getting into the system. Here I was not that careful. I left it downstairs where there is light coming into the house. But I did put it. I did put obviously the corrector cover plate on, and I did put the uh, external scope cover over that uh, to try to prevent any stray light from entering. So. Uh, it's probably not the perfect dark flat, but it's, it ought to be pretty darn good. <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't have any, certainly any significant stray light coming in. But for the first time ever, uh, I took some dark flats, and I wanted to compare the dark flats um, taken with and without the dew shield to and flats to use to calibrate flats taken without with and without the dew shield uh, for the light frames, which were definitely taken with the uh, with the dew shield. And the big question that we want to deal with today is, can we see any differences in the stacked light frames through the different possible flat frame calibration approaches that we're talking about here? All right, well, first of all, let's talk about that calibration process within Pix Insight. The master dark flat approach here on the left these are the settings so you obviously you pick your your flat frames uh, down here there is no bias frame so we don't include a bias frame we have a master dark but it's the dark flat that we have and that means we don't have to use the optimized check mark box here because this dark flat was taken at the same exposure time as all the flat frames and obviously there's no master flat so the only calibration that you have to do is taking this dark flat, creating a master dark flat to subtract out from each of these uh, flat frames. The other option, which is what I've basically been doing all along, is in this case, uh, there's three differences here. I've got a master bias frame, which in this case is 50, a gain of 50, but taken at a 32 microsecond exposure time as opposed to the 55 millisecond exposure time, say, of these, of these flat frames. I've got a master dark, but it's the dark frame that I use for calibrating the light frames, which in this case would have been uh, at 200 seconds, although here I happen to have a dark frame in my dark frame library that's 50 seconds long, which means that when I do the optimizations to convert this dark frame down to the exposure time of these flat frames, it doesn't have to go as far, quote unquote, by going from a 50 second exposure down to a 55 millisecond exposure. I doubt that's a big issue here. But anyway, the you check the optimize button here on this uh, in the dialog box to make sure that you do down convert this dark frame uh, to the same uh, level of noise that you would get for a much shorter exposure flat frame versus the uh, much longer exposure light frame. So that's what that optimize button is doing. So this is what I would normally do. This is what I'm sure is the correct way to do. A central question is, uh, does it matter? And there may be cases when it does, there may be cases when it doesn't. Now, after we get, if you go through this dialog box, you get a set of calibrated flat frames. Here you get another set, different set of calibrated flat frames. And now you've got to integrate those two sets independently to get to a master flat frame. And so this is where you would load in either one of those two sets of flat frames. And just to see the settings, I'm using the a combination, the average combination, multiplicative in this case because they're flat frames. I'm setting all the weights equal to one. I'm using Windsorized Sigma clipping. And um, for normalization, I'm uh, equalizing the fluxes from, from file to file. So that's the same there. Uh, and then I just go ahead and click the global button. And then that will produce a master flat frame that we will use when calibrating the light frames. All right, so that's the process of calibrating the flat frames in a nutshell. 
and now we can move on and look at some of the light frames. This is one sub of, in this case, M51 that I was shooting. So on the right-hand side here, I've got the uh, calibrated single frame using the uh, common sense master flat frame, which is, which is to say that it's the master flat obtained by using uh, the dark flats and with the dew shield in place. That is, I took the flats with the dew shield. I then calibrated using dark flats. And so this, in my mind, is probably the best possible calibration you can get for the flats. Now, in addition, I've used, because we're calibrating a light frame, I've used the master bias and the master dark for this 200 second exposure. And as you can see, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly flat frame. We certainly don't have any uh, obvious defects. When I use the screen transfer function to scale this up so that we can see it, I'm taking that screen transfer function and applying it back to the non-calibrated, no calibrate, the r purely raw uh, image, the same image, but it's just there's been no calibration to it. So now what's happening is what you're seeing, there's a big difference between these two images. The primary thing you're seeing is that the master bias and master dark have taken down the noise level of this calibrated frame which permits a more aggressive screen stretch. And now that aggressive screen stretch is being applied to this original raw image that has all that noise present. So that noise is getting magnified and that's what you're really seeing here. So the main difference between this area of the image say and this area of the image is that the master bias and master dark have, have knocked down the noise level in the image. Now the flat effect, the flat frame calibration part of this occurs in the corners. You can see here there's a, a tad bit of vignetting, a bit darker in the corners, maybe along this edge, maybe in this corner. There's a lot of darkness over here, but that's the shadow of the off-axis guider that I'm using. So the we're looking to the flat frame to correct the shadow and any residual vignetting going on in the corners. And you can see that the flat frame has, in fact, taken out that uh, shadow from the off-axis guider, and there's no appreciable... Uh, evidence of any vignetting in the corners. So I think the flat frame and all calibration here has done a very good job of taking this particular raw image and making a flat field uh, illuminated light frame on the, in, in this case. Now what we want to do is to take a look at a stack of these light frames and see if we can see any effect. All right, here is a stack. I've only got three and, and, and a quarter hours roughly on this target so far. I'm, I'm sharing imaging time uh, between this and another target. But at this stage, I've only got three and a, and, and a quarter hours. And on the left, we have the calibration performed using the dark flats. Call that the ideal method. And we have a comparison with a calibration using the uh, master bias and master darks where the darks have been optimized that is scaled back to represent the exposure time of the flats. In both cases I've used uh, flats that were taken with the dew shield in place because the light frames were taken with the dew shield in place. And so this is just a comparison of the effects of using dark flats versus the bias and the master bias and master dark. When I look at this image, even in my higher resolution monitor, higher resolution than the video you're looking at, frankly, there's just no significant, maybe there's no insignificant difference between these two images here. When I call up the statistics tool or process in PixInsight, the global statistics are virtually identical. Uh, when I take the screen stretch that I, I compute for this particular image and apply it back to this image, it has no effect. So for all intents and purposes for this one image, the, the effort of taking out the dark flats produces an image of the same quality as the uh, calibration performed using the bias and optimized dark frames. All right, now let's look at the effect of the dew shield. Here is the same idea. I've got over here the calib uh, this is the calibrated with the dark flats and the dew shield. So it's the same image we had on the left side of the picture in the previous slide. On the right hand side over here, though, I've got I've done the calibration. This is this should be the worst case calibration. So I've calibrated with the bias, the master bias and the optimized master darks, but it's using the flats that were taken when the, with no dew shield. Now, it's 
difficult to pull this out again uh, in your version, probably in your version of the video on the screen, high resolution screen. Uh, I can see uh, clear defects uh, up in this corner. There's a little band of light here. There's a circular donut like defect here, 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 and some other locations. So there are defects present in this image that were not present in the other uh, comparison where we just used the bi master bias and master darks, but we did have the dew shield in place. So in other words, we, we are seeing some, not significant, but some image degradation if we take flats without the dew shield, but we took the light frames with the dew shield and probably it, vice versa as well. What have I learned from this little process? Uh, well, first of all, I, I do believe that the proper flat frame calibration process uh, uses flats with the same temperature gain and bias as the light frames that you're taking. Uh, that you probably should calibrate with dark flats instead of the fl master flat, master, bi uh, master bias, and optimize master dark and you should also take flats with the dew shield in place if you took the lights with the dew shield in place the fact of the matter is it's easier to manage uh, dark flats because you if you use a light panel to control the exposure time because that way you can create a library of dark flats with the much shorter exposure time of a second or so uh, that uh, it's very difficult to reproduce that when you're using sky flats and the t-shirt method like i'm doing Otherwise, each time you go out and you get a different lighting situation uh, and take a flat, you'll have to reproduce that particular lighting situation when you take the dark flats. And so it's a kind of it doubles your work in that regard. Uh, so it is much more convenient to rely on the master bias and a, an optimized master dark frame. That said, uh, this is the proper way to uh, deal with uh, flat frame calibration in my view. Now, the alternate uh, method of flat frame calibration is to do what I just said, which is to subtract the master bias and uh, use PIX Insight to create an optimized version of the master dark so that it more or less matches the noise level of the uh, much uh, shorter exposure time associated with the flat. Uh, now, having d done and compared the two, I couldn't. I can't see any difference at all between these two methods. Uh, so I, I'll be perfectly happy. I think uh, saving time for me, uh, and uh, using the and subtracting the master bias with an optimized master dark. If you have a light panel, on the other hand, I would go the other route. Uh, I would uh, create a master dark library and then endeavor to set the same illumination each time I took flats so that I could have the same exposure time for the luminance and the RGB filters and the uh, narrow band filters. And that way I could just call back on my master uh, dark flat library to to calibrate the frames and I wouldn't have to retake the dark flats each time so I think it's if you have a, uh, a light panel then uh, the quote proper unquote method is is much more convenient uh, than if you're using the t-shirt method where the quote alternate unquote uh, approach seems to be uh, a bit more of a time saver now the dew shield I took flats with and without the dew shield and the only time when I saw any residual image defects in the flat frame calibration is when there was a mismatch when I took the the images the, the light frames with the dew shield and took the flat frames without the dew shield then I could see some very faint uh, residual defects in the image when I take light frames that have uh, the dew shield or don't have the dew shield then I will take endeavor to take flat frames that match those uh, those light frames. Sometimes, particularly when you rely on the environment, you have to uh, rely on the illumination provided by the uh, by the given morning. And sometimes it might be about to rain. You might have to bring your equipment in. You may not have time to take a set of flats that that reproduce that particular imaging setup. Well, I wouldn't sweat it uh, if it's uh, you know the the kind of defects that I'm I'm seeing are pretty small, and if they are just represent a small fraction of the number of images you ultimately end up taking with that particular filter uh, you it may not show up it may not show up in the final image at all and, and, and like I say it's going to be faint it's going to be in the background uh, so it's probably not a big deal you could you could probably make an argument to leave to just 
take flats without the dew shield and use those whether or not you have lights taken with the dew shield. For me, I'm going to try to match them going forward, but I can certainly see that there could be situations where I'm just not going to be able to capture a set of flats to match that particular evening's version of the imaging system that I have that is with or without the dew shield. So, And I don't think it's a showstopper. Where do I come down on this based on this very uh, quick assessment? Uh, well, must-dos. You have to take flats with the same temperature gain and offset as the light frames. I think that's the biggest thing you can do to get good light frames. Now, you should take flats with the dew shield if you use the dew shield to take the lights. And conversely, if you don't use a dew shield to take the lights, then your flat should not have a dew shield either. It's not going to be a disaster. Uh, it, it may not even leave you with terribly obvious defects if you uh, happen to have a mismatched set of flats with your lights uh, as far as the dew shield is concerned. I think the do if you cans, if you have a light panel uh, to take your flats with and can uh, easily control the illumination, that gives you the opportunity to create a library of, of dark flats. And then it takes some of the headache out of creating the, the master dark flat. If you don't have a light panel, if you're using the sky flats as I am, it is a bit more of a, uh, a pain in the neck, if you will, to... Uh, always have to create a dark flat to go with your flats because the particular exposure time used for that particular filter was different from the last time you took it so that becomes a, an impossible to control thing so you just have to take a whole bunch of dark flats along with your your uh, flat frames it wasn't that hard to do but uh, it didn't clearly provide any benefit uh, for this uh, little uh, comparison that i did here so i could go either way on this one and your experience may be different. You may have different cases where, or scenarios where it clearly it mattered whether you had the dew shield in place or not, or whether you use dark flats or you use the master bias and the optimized master darks. I don't know. Take these uh, findings for what it's worth. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got for now. I've got some uh, opinions that I'll share with you later on the use of the dew shield. I found it very effective, by the way. And uh, if only it weren't for the its sale-like qualities, I would be relying on it all of the time. But I'll save that and some other findings related to dew prevention in a later video. For now, clear skies, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.